mentioned what the theme is. Uh, uh, it's we have just called it Mohre. Um, that's the we are trying to kind of put in a Hindi word in each of them. State versus people. Uh, we are talking about constant friction between the governments and people. Is centuries old. Those in power have always exploited the masses. In this chessboard of money and power, people have been the pawns sacrificed. While uprisings and revolts against the power citadels have brought about changes, it has also wreaked havoc and human rights violations against the janta, I mean, janta in quotes, under the garb of progress and development. How with low-cost technology and global spread of social media, people seem to have found a new weapon to fight the power brokers. How effective are these cyber weapons? And can they fight oppression effectively? These are some of the points we're going to talk about. So over the years, like how effective has been kind of really putting it in that grassroots level? What issues you want to grapple with? Um, in the first place, let me tell you that I don't belong to the Facebook generation. Okay? I belong to the face-to-face -face generation. So I've always, uh, whenever we've done work, we have encountered whether it's the politician or the bureaucrat face-to-face. But congrats to the way Twitter and Facebook and all is, you know, spreading the message. But you don't come face to face, you don't know what that guy really stands for. So ALM, I, you know, I'll just briefly say, which is called Advanced Locality Management, which is your street committee, uh, which the BMC incidentally started and it has taken off. The largest number of ALMs are in Bandra in the city of Mumbai. So we're very proud of it. I'll just give you one or two quick examples where we worked at grassroots level. They wanted to widen the load. Widening Hill Road, they were going to take away three heritage sites, two churches, one Parsi Adyari. We decided to have a demonstration, kept every politician out. So when they first assured us, don't worry, we won't do it, then they put up a sign, 48 hours notice on the Parsi Adyari wall. So we said, okay, let's have a meeting there at 11 o'clock, again when the bulldozers come and let's handle it. I went across to the Bandra police station, I said, so we need permission. So he said, okay, we are just across in case something goes wrong. He said, but if you're going to need the use of a sound system, then you have to go to um, Crawford Market Police Station. I said, I'm not going all that way. I have a loud voice. 200 people coming, it will be OK. How many people do you think came? 1,500 people. I'm not joking. This is what I'm saying, that grassroots level, absolutely, Hill Road was shut down. No shops open, nothing open. Again, we took it up. Politicians tried to jump on the bandwagon from Congress to MNS to everybody. We threw them all out, OK? We went up to Johnny Joseph, who was the municipal commissioner at that time. And again, he challenged us and he said that, oh, you know, we've been wanting to, this was in 2006, we wanted to widen Hill Road for the last 10 years. How come you're objecting? I said, sir, 10 years ago, five buildings have come up on the other side of the road for which you gave permission. If you wanted to widen the road, you could have taken that side. You don't take away a heritage site. That's not allowed. No answer. We put it through RTI, another victory one. So what I'm saying is, I do it. So it's it's possible to do it. It's possible to do it if you work at grassroots level to challenge the system, to challenge the system. Because, like you said correctly, if you don't challenge the system, you're a pawn in that system. And how dare they make us a pawn? After all, we are the masters. They are the public servants. Is it usually the only the people who agree with some sense who gather together to? create change or do other people just come forward because they see there's an uh, interesting uh, or an important uh, subject to be tackled at this point of time? Uh, both. It all depends on what uh, interaction you have as an activist with the local population of different communities. The reason the politician wants to come on board is he's doing it only for publicity and he's doing it only for votes. The people know that the activist is doing it just for a cause. It is very frustrating sometimes, you know, one feels. But I always believe that when you've decided to get into this, when you've decided to, you know, work for a better cause, there are three things that you should think of. I call them the three Ps. One is patience, one is prayer, and one is perseverance. These three things, if you keep behind you, and you don't say that, okay, nothing's going to happen, don't think negatively, don't be a pessimist. It works. It definitely works. Because everybody will say, oh, what are you doing? I mean, why are you breaking your head? It's not worth it. You know, just, it, nothing is going to change. But there is one quote which I would like to share with you. And it's very simple. It says that bad things happen because good people keep quiet. When you make this on certain issues, you I mean, uh, use people who will agree with, which I, in fact, was asking uh, to take the film much more 
around, in terms of spread it around, you know, in the sense that you work with a community or a, a, a group of people whom you're putting in the film and ask them to take the film around uh, and so that it be seen sometimes the distribution system blocks it and how do you do Yeah, that? well, the distribution system is, uh, you know, when I, as I told last time also in press conference, that I, when I made the film, uh, my objective was that the film is seen by everybody and I even told uh, UTV who acquired the film, I said I made it with my own money, I mortgaged my own house, it's okay. Can you show the film free? Can it be exhibited free around the country? It's an important film. We are living in a very difficult time. And uh, as a storyteller, I just believe that, you know, by telling stories, if somebody can go back home, if each one of us in the audience can go back home and think about our lives and think about our prejudices. Uh, I'm not saying do something about it. At least think about it. You know, thinking about it, internalizing uh, things through stories, is the first step. How do you find the energy and, uh, to kind of party to uh, issues and kind of force your way in to voice your thing? I just want to know a little more about your work because uh, that would be interesting for us uh, today to understand. Uh, okay, uh, I'm not a professional activist. So all of activism is basically part of my passion in whatever time that I, that I get. Because I don't think that activism and this typical NGO theory is the answer to solution. The way I generally look at things is, if you really have a problem, try and solve the problem such that it can be sustained. And if you notice the kind of intervention that I've uh, continuously been doing, be it India Against Corruption and all those large rallies, or the King Ruben murders and the Zero Tolerance campaign which led to the amendment of the IPC that we did subsequent to that. So all of this is a little intangible because governance is intangible. And uh, which is why it is very, very, it's a very valid question, you know, uh, what really drives you? Because it's very simple to feed the dogs on the road, no offense to this, right? It's very simple to feed the dog on the road, you know, give a meal to a, a, a person in need, and, you know, a full stomach is, and a smile on his face gives you satisfaction. But governance is a little convoluted. As in, you know, ye karenge to law banega, policy change hogi, or fir usko implement kiya jayega, or thik se implement kiya jayega, to aapki zindagi bal So, you know, there's a little longer thing there, but I think you need to be audacious, and as young young people, we aren't audacious, and you know, seriously, who will? But when you do this campaign, how do you get the people? How do you, uh, I mean, what forms do you use to gather people? Because that's always a challenge. Like, I mean, if I set up a campaign, how do you get people interested? How do I motivate them to come? Uh, uh, do things, you know. To answer that, when we first started India Against Corruption here, you know, I, I got a random call from a gentleman who is now called Arvind Kejriwal <laughs> about, you know, in 2011 January, saying that, oh, we want to uh, do some anti-corruption movement and you seem to be a good activist, so I want to do something. And I said, okay, let's, let's do it. So, of all the 200 odd friends I invited, you know, about eight guys showed up. Four were from my football team, I play professional footballer, Junior Khan. They were telling me, like, like, seriously. And you're going to have like, change come. And that first meeting of India Against Corruption was on my terrace with just these eight people, that's all. And I think the rest is history. So to answer your question, uh, whatever you do as regards when, when you run a movement, it's important to differentiate between an action and an activity. Right? Activity is kuch karna hai kar do, chalo ja ke mocha kar do, chikana hai, chalana hai, flash mob kar do, fa fu. But if the activity is, is focused to an outcome, that is action. And action, in the best possible way, at least the way I do it, is the, my, my mantra, is collective informed assertion. So, what is collective? Whatever we do has to be done together. Informed. It's important that you realize what the hell are you asking and you know, what way are you proceeding from there. So, collective informed assertion. Now, we are not Maoists now, with due respect to the large and us, if at all. We can't just, just because somebody doesn't agree with your opinion, you can't just take the gun and just shoot the guy's head off. Collective informed assertion. You need to know what you're doing and you need to do it with people together. The power is in organization. Yeah. Simple people can get targeted. The moment you're organized, the moment you, there is a support system, both emotional as well as logistically things change. One of the things which I really took uh, immediately was the whole idea of the action and activity. For me, that was really interesting and that really translates to what Harish is right now continuing to do in terms of like... Uh, Ways uh, apart from the uh, I don't know, animal welfare rights and also LGBT rights. Uh, now the Supreme Court uh, 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 judgment coming in, which is recriminalization of sexuality. We know that there will be an activity plan tomorrow. There's a, a big protest, you know. But again, in terms of action, do we have actions and how do you see this campaign going 
and what are the repercussions of the Supreme Court judgment which is coming? The first response to something like that was rage. I was more bothered about people in, in places where they can't speak uh, so openly. People in places where they would be, where when they would just peep out of the closet and they would be shunned into a life of silence. And uh, it would take much more than simple resilience for them to fight back. Uh, so I was, I was bothered about all those things. Those were the things that were running in my mind. And, and I thought that, okay, this law has come and now uh, everyone is going to, uh, because I'm, I, I'm somebody who attends calls of people wanting to commit suicide, wanting ch child sex abuse survivors. So all these people call in to me. So I was like, and I had seen a considerable drop in the number of calls after the Delhi High Court verdict. Now, I, I, and I could see the difference. I, I was bothered and I was worried about the number of people who would be pushed deep into the closet. But what happened was exactly opposite. As, at, at least in cities like, uh, like Bombay, uh, like in the metro cities, we had more and more people coming out and putting Facebook updates saying that, you know what, I'm, I'm gay, you deal with it. And they just sporadically started coming out. Sometimes you need to, to when you're pushed to a corner, where you have nothing more to lose. The only way, I, I always say this, don't push me to a level that I have nothing left to lose. Because after that, I'll only win. So that's precisely what is happening with Section 377. Um, and, and people have started understanding that it's not about gay rights. It's not about the right to have sex. I, I, in fact, I take objection to saying have sex and to making love. Uh, it's not the right to make love because I can definitely uh, make love even without informing anybody and I don't need to inform anybody but the but the right to a life with dignity uh, the right to a life where I do something in my bedroom and pura samaj ko pura lagega. the right to a life without extortion because we, we all know uh, that the extortion cases increase because now the police because we have had many cases of people you know complaining extortion uh, baits and other things and you have had people coming and saying that you know what it's illegal so what are you talking about so now you don't you have lost and we have lost an argument uh, 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 Harish, I mean, he, he also works I mean, as uh, Rubel said he also has a job you know but apart from his job I don't know how he manages time all the time he is on Facebook, Twitter, phone offering I mean like services and like counseling and offering information Spreading information. If I need something, I just call Harish and he gives me information. You know, how do you manage that thing? I mean, that keep up the momentum, keep finding time, finding the energy, finding the goal. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, the passion will continue. I know. Uh, how do you do that? How do you? I mean, it's like a lot of work. I think I think when you're passionate about, and more than passionate about, you if you're compassionate about your causes, you somehow or the other. I don't I don't consider it as a duty or it's just an extension of me. Um, be, it, be it anyone who calls me, I would pick up the call and I would speak to the person. Uh, yes, when I'm doing a business presentation or I'm working on something, I would request that person to, to tell me. Or I would stay up till around 3 o'clock in the night and answer emails. But never would I tell a person that I can't do go and speak to that, uh, that NGO, this NGO. I would never, I would say that you have an option if you want to speak to a counsellor. I'm very upright in telling people that, you know what, I'm not a professional counsellor. But uh, there are many times, especially, I think pain is a great binder. And because I have by choice shared the trauma that I've been through in childhood about child sexual abuse and about homosexuality and homophobia that I face. So I think pain is a great magnet. It is tough I, if you don't have uh, family support because uh, I'm a grandmother, I have three grandchildren, but they are very impressed with the kind of work I do. Um, they would always ask me, in fact, I have a granddaughter who is 11 living in America, and she seriously tells me, don't you think you should be the mayor of Mumbai? I mean, <laughs> that, that's, you know, her way of complimenting her grandmother. But it's true, you, you constantly get calls, you constantly have people knocking on your door, can you help, can you? This, this simple thing about this Hill Road thing, which I wanted to tell you, I had just come back from a holiday, uh, from abroad and next day I had three other activists at my door saying Chama we need to organize a public meeting immediately I said okay done St. Joseph's convent let's have the meeting 500 people attended the meeting and then it spread 
the 500 became 1500 became so many others and like you had the local MLA trying to jump onto the bandwagon, you had corporators who tried, you know, BJP on one side, I got a call from Raj Thakre saying, Thakre Saman, you have to say something, but you have to say something, but you have to say something, but I don't want to talk to him. It's about time we stopped keeping quiet. We love to sit in our armchair in front of the TV with a drink in our hand and say, oh, Bombay is going to the dogs and this is happening, that's happening. What are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? That's the question. Thank you so much, Shama, Ravin, Harish and Sir.